Hey everybody, it's time for our Bible study devotion, and I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about God's will, about God's will. Uh, maybe one of the most common questions that I've had people ask me over the years is, what's God's will for me? What's God's will for my life? And I can't answer every aspect of what God's will for your life is, but I was reading a scripture verse today that will at least help us answer some of the big things that we need to know that will help us understand what God's will for our life is. And so I was reading 1 Thessalonians uh, today, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and verse 16 through 18 says this, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. It says, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And as we go along through life, there's so many things that we that we think about and decisions that we have to make. And, and if, we, if we love the Lord, we certainly want to make decisions where we're doing things that we know and understand are God's will for our lives. Because when we do that, when we do God's will, since he's a loving Heavenly Father, we know that those things are going to bring him honor and glory as well as be a blessing for us in our lives and help us to have the best lives that we can. So just for a minute, I want us to think about what's his will? What's his will for our lives? And we certainly have some answers in the scripture verse that we read. So there's three things I think that we see in the scripture verse that will help us understand what God's will for our lives is. Now, it may not, it may not answer a question uh, about what color of shirt you're supposed to wear this morning or what kind of pants uh, God wants you to put on before you go out to, to church or to, to visit friends or whatever, but it will help us have a mind that is thinking in a way that when we're thinking our thoughts, we can know that God is able to, to lead us and guide us and direct us in the decisions that we make. So what's his will? Well, number one, we see from this scripture verse, one of the big things that's God's will for our lives is for you and me to rejoice always, to, to be joyful always. Now, uh, joyfulness or rejoicing is different than happiness. A lot of times people try to make joy, joy and happiness or joyfulness and happiness mean the same thing, and they don't. See, happiness is dependent on what happens. In other words, if somebody were to, if Miss Jean was to walk from behind that camera right there and smack me across the face, do you think I would be happy? No, I would not be happy. So we can't always be happy. Certainly God is concerned about our happiness, but we can't always be happy because there's things that happen in life where we can't be happy. If, if somebody we know gets sick or something bad happens to us or somebody we know, that doesn't mean we're happy. So joyfulness and happiness are different. And it doesn't say be happy always. It says rejoice always. To, to rejoice is to have an inner sense of peace, understanding, and uh, calmness that realizes that we have a loving Heavenly Father that has everything under control. There's nothing that gets by Him, and He has our best interests at heart. And so with that inner peace, that will help in our thinking process when we're making decisions. So, so one of the things that's definitely God's will for you and me is to be joyful always, to rejoice every day of our lives. Even if things aren't going well, even if things are tough or we're having a real bad day or a bad situation, we can still have that inner inner sense of peace and inner sense of, of well-being inside of us, knowing that God is leading and directing and uh, directing us and guiding us in the things that we do. Let me give you an example of how this works, uh, joy versus happiness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, is talking about Jesus when, when he was getting ready to go to the cross, or what Jesus thought about the fact that he was going to suffer for you and me. Hebrews 12, 2 says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Do you think it made Jesus happy to have a crown of thorns put on his head? Do you think it made Jesus happy to have his hands and feet nailed to a cross? Obviously, none of that made Jesus happy. That was not a happy thing. Yet Hebrews 12, 2 says, for the joy set before him. In other words, Jesus had an inner peace knowing his heavenly father was in control. And after he was done going through those things that were not happy things, there was going to be great blessing and benefit because you and I were going to be able to have our sins forgiven and, and have our, our souls saved because of the work that he did. So he wasn't happy about it, 
but he was joyful about it. So you and I, we're not always going to be happy with, with what's happening in our lives, but we can always rejoice knowing that God is in control and has our best interest in heart. So rejoice always. Number two, pray continually. That's what the second thing it says. It says pray continually. Now, is it possible to pray continually? Well, that depends on what your understanding of prayer is. Because if you think that praying continually means that you always have to be on your knees doing something like this, well, no, you can't pray continually that way because we, we have things to do in lives. We have, we have lives to live and people to see and tasks, tasks to accomplish. So when the Bible says to pray continually, it doesn't mean be on our knees continually, although there are great times that we should be on our knees. You know, maybe when we get up in the morning or before we go to bed at night or if something's really heavy on our hearts, certainly getting on our knees is a sign of humility and respect to God. But God knows we can't just stay on our knees all the time. So to, to pray continually means that Whatever we're doing, I mean, I'm praying right now while I'm talking to you. I'm thinking about the Lord's heart and His will and His desire and His word. To pray continually means to have a continual consciousness of God's work in our lives and to, to lift up our concerns, our desires, and thoughts to Him. Remember, the word pray actually means toward. That's what the word literally means. So to pray continually means to continually have our heart towards the Lord, whether we're at school whenever that happens that we get back to school, or whether it were work, or whether we're with friends, that we're continually having our heart toward the Lord, so we're expressing our heart to Him and allowing His heart to be expressed back to us. That's what it means to pray continually. See, when we do that, we begin to get the mind of Christ and, and God's uh, understanding in our lives, which will help us make better decisions. The better decisions that we make, the more we will be in God's will in the things that we do every day. So rejoice always, pray continually, and number three, it says, give thanks in all situations. Having a heart of gratefulness is so important to doing God's will. Uh, and, and, and the scripture says that that's one of the things that God desires for us. You say, well, what does God want me to do? He wants us to give thanks in all circumstances, realizing that he's a good, loving, heavenly father. He is leading, guiding, and directing us. And even though there are circumstances and things that happen in our lives that are difficult, we need to have a heart of thankfulness, knowing that God is working it all out for our good. And, and, and so when we have that heart of thankfulness, that's the third thing that helps keep our minds thinking about things God's way so that we make good decisions. And in the end, we know then we're walking and following God's will for our lives. So no, I can't tell you what you're supposed to eat for lunch and what God's will is for you for dinner. Can't tell you that. That's something that you have to figure out based on rejoicing always, praying continually, and giving thanks in all circumstances. But if we do those three things, we can be assured that God will lead us and direct us into walking in His will every day of our lives. So what's His will? Well, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, and He will lead and guide our steps every day. So don't forget, Sunday is our next teaching in the Life of Jesus series. You know, the greatest joy and happiness in my life it's the Word of God. But there is a little thing that helps give me some joy and happiness. Go. Thank you.